saya akan membahas mengenai STIP. Ada yang tahu nggak STIP itu singkatan dari apa? Nah, Kabula Moda, Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Pelayaran di Jakarta ini punya kabar gembira. Karena sebentar lagi akan menjadi kampus pelaut pertama di Indonesia yang mempunyai dan membuka program Strata 2 atau S2 layaknya perguruan tinggi lain di dunia. Dan S2 di STIP ini adalah sebuah komitmen nyata dari Kementerian Perhubungan untuk bisa turut mencetak SDM unggul di dunia kemaritiman dan kelautan. Kalau ingin mendapatkan informasi lebih lengkap, klik ke websitenya stipjakarta.ac.id Indonesia is a country that sits at the fulcrum of the Indian and Pacific Ocean. With three archipelagic sea lines, it's committed to supporting the international seaborne trade. As maritime sector will continue to be a top priority, our priorities such as ensuring maritime safety and security at sea and undertaking maritime environmental protection would require close cooperation and active participation with the IMO. We take our responsibility seriously in ensuring safety and security of the vessels sailing through our archipelagic sea lanes. This commitment, for example, is manifested through the Traffic Separation Scheme in Sunda Strait and Lombok Strait, adopted in the 101st Maritime Safety Committee meeting last June 2019. On maritime environmental protection, Indonesia has been actively working with IMO members to ensure the protection of marine ecosystems such as oil spill and dumping waste and plastic at sea by ships. Through its membership in the Council of IMO, Indonesia will continue to promote sustainable shipping by reducing air pollution and its impact on climate change by shipping. During October 2019, IMO led workshops to discuss the technical factors of reducing the transfer of those harmful aquatic species on ships' hulls and their ability to engage with glow fouling. Concluding, Glow Fouling's partnership forward plans include developing national baseline reports to assess the present situation with regard to non-indigenous species. On 28th and 29th of October 2019 in Jakarta, following after the launch of Glow Fouling project in London, Indonesia be the first country from the Glow Fouling project members to conduct the first Glow Fouling project team national task force meeting. The meeting provides a variety of ideas and sharing information and experiences from government entities and related stakeholders towards the Glow Fouling Partnership projects. Indonesia develops a model training course to provide the latest training for seafarers to have competence in accordance with the minimum requirements required by the STCWF Convention. With the availability of a new training course model, which will later be applied to marine education and training in Indonesia, it is hoped that it can improve the competency of Indonesian seafarers. Indonesia's involvement in several IMO-related projects is a clear evidence of Indonesia's commitment. Indonesia held a 12th Corporation Forum, 44th Tripartite Technical Experts Group and 12th Project Coordination Committee in Semarang, Central Java attended by three littoral states and Malacca and Singapore Straits user states. Domestically, Indonesia continues to improve itself in several important fields in the maritime sector, such as National Plan of Action of Reducing Plastic Debris by Holding Sea and Beach Cleaning Activities Simultaneously in 228 ports throughout Indonesia, this activity managed to get a world record as a joint clean sea and beach action in 228 locations. Increased sea transportation routes to support the Maritime Highway program have increased by 95% in 2019. The construction of pioneering sea transportation vessels has been completed as many as 95 units out of a total target of 103 units. Construction of 10 navigation ships that have been completed. Construction of aids to navigation which have been completed by 90%. Indonesia will continue to support IMO in implementing its strategic plan and ensure the balanced approach to address the needs for economic development and safety, security and environment protection of international shipping. 
Indonesia believes that our future lies on the sea. Therefore, we need to strengthen partnership and collaboration to be able to deal with all those maritime threats, including to strengthen the work of IMO as the only multilateral platform to solve global maritime problems. Indonesia is devoted to continuing its active participation and strong commitment in the deliberation of organization reform of the IMO. Continuously work on the implementation of IMO instruments, especially in the area of marine safety and security and environment protection policy. With a very large sea area that is approximately 70% of the total area of Indonesia with enormous potential and marine resources, especially in the industrial sector, Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Pelayaran has a role to optimize the potential of Indonesia's navy. The School of Sailing is a state-owned maritime institution managed by the Indonesia Ministry of Transportation. In 1953, the School of Sailing was originally named the Academy of Sailing Science, provide a diploma three program and had two study programs named Nautics and Engineering. In 1957, AIP was inaugurated by the first president of the Republic of Indonesia, President Soekarno, at the Sahari Building, Mangadua Ancho. In 1983, the Academy of Sailing Science changed its name to Training Education and Sailing Expert, or PLAP. In March 2000, the Training and Sailing Expert Education changed again its name to the School of Sailing, which carried out eight semesters of education in three majors. There are nautics, engineering, and sea transportation management and port or KALK. In 2002, the STIP school moved to Marunda Cilincing, North Jakarta with an area of 32 hectares. In 2018, as the IP obtained recognition of the Quality Management System Standard ISO 9001-2015 from the LIOTS Registered Quality Assurance Agency Certification. As the IP Jakarta also received A for institution accreditation according to the SK Ban PT. Not only that, all study program in STIP, which are nautical, engineering, and KALK study program, have also been A accredited by Banpete. STIP has lectures with IMC 6.09 certification for trainers training, IMC 3.12 for examiners trainings. IMC 6.10 for trainers of simulators and assessors training, instructional technique skills training, and applied approach for lecture. To create capable officers, various facilities have also been prepared by STIP Jakarta to support the teaching and learning process of cadets. STIP has 123 lecture rooms with a capacity of 1,637 students. Furthermore, to support the good learning methods, STIP has also provided a complete practical laboratory and also a complete library. Cadets and stipend cadets will go through eight semesters of learning at STIP until graduation. Where in first semester to fourth semester, they will stay at the dormitory. Semester five and six, 
they will be taking a real work practice. Semester 7 and 8, they will return to study at the dormitory. Therefore, STIP Jakarta has also prepared a comfortable and separate dormitory for their cadets with a capacity of 1,560 people. To develop students' talents, STIP offers extracurricular activities such as trombone, porous work, compass park, seafarers training and education registration room, New Taruna Registration Room, Setting Mart, Public Canton, and Employee Pickup Buses. To become a professional and reliable officer with integrity, of course, it should be supported by adequate facilities. Here, STIP provides opportunities for students to take part in onboard training so that students can experience sailing activities firsthand. Therefore, SDIP has prepared a practical sale called MH Tamrin Sale. Not only formal education, SDIP also provides non-formal education such as seafarers, skill training and seafarers training that have received approval from the Directorate General of Sea Transportation. Kaula Muda, jumpa lagi dengan saya Berlayar jauh keluar kota Mampir sebentar ke Pulau Nusa Penida Halo, saya Adita Kita jumpa lagi hanya di Kabar Moda Di episode kali ini Saya akan membahas mengenai STIP Ada yang tahu nggak STIP itu singkatan dari apa? Nah, Kaula Muda Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Pelayaran di Jakarta ini punya kabar gembira karena sebentar lagi akan menjadi kampus pelaut pertama di Indonesia yang mempunyai dan membuka program Strata 2 atau S2 layaknya perguruan tinggi lain di dunia. Dan S2 di STIP ini adalah sebuah komitmen nyata dari Kementerian Perhubungan untuk bisa turut 
mencetak SDM unggul di dunia kemaritiman dan kelautan. Kalau ingin mendapatkan informasi lebih lengkap, klik ke websitenya stipjakarta.ac.id. Indonesia is a country that sits at the fulcrum of the Indian and Pacific Ocean. With three archipelagic sea lines, it's committed to supporting the international seaborne trade. As maritime sector will continue to be a top priority, our priorities such as ensuring maritime safety and security at sea and undertaking maritime environmental protection would require close cooperation and active participation with the IMO. We take our responsibility seriously in ensuring safety and security of the vessels sailing through our archipelagic sea lanes. This commitment, for example, is manifested through the traffic separation scheme in Sunda Strait and Lombok Strait, adopted in the 101st Maritime Safety Committee meeting last June 2019. On maritime environmental protection, Indonesia has been actively working with IMO members to ensure the protection of marine ecosystems such as oil spill and dumping waste and plastic at sea by ships. Through its membership in the Council of IMO, Indonesia will continue to promote sustainable shipping by reducing air pollution and its impact on climate change by shipping. During October 2019, IMO led workshops to discuss the technical factors of reducing the transfer of those harmful aquatic species on ships' hulls and their ability to engage with glow fouling. Concluding, Glow Fouling's partnership forward plans include developing national baseline reports to assess the present situation with regard to non-indigenous species. On 28th and 29th of October 2019 in Jakarta, following after the launch of Glow Fouling Project in London, Indonesia be the first country from the Glow Fouling Project members to conduct the first Glow Fouling Project Team National Task Force meeting. The meeting provides a variety of ideas and sharing information and experiences from government entities and related stakeholders towards the Glow Fouling Partnership projects. Indonesia developed a model training course to provide the latest training for seafarers to have competence in accordance with the minimum requirements required by the STCWF Convention. With the availability of a new training course model, which will later be applied to marine education and training in Indonesia, it is hoped that it can improve the competency of Indonesian seafarers. Indonesia's involvement in several IMO-related projects is a clear evidence of Indonesia's commitment. Indonesia held a 12th Corporation Forum, 44th Tripartite Technical Experts Group and 12th Project Coordination Committee in Semarang, Central Java attended by three littoral states and Malacca and Singapore Straits user states. Domestically, Indonesia continues to improve itself in several important fields in the maritime sector, such as national plan of action of reducing plastic debris by holding sea and beach cleaning activities simultaneously in 228 ports throughout Indonesia, this activity managed to get a world record as a joint clean sea and beach action in 228 locations. Increased sea transportation routes to support the Maritime Highway Program have increased by 95% in 2019. The construction of pioneering sea transportation vessels has been completed as many as 95 units out of a total target of 103 units. Construction of 10 navigation ships that have been completed. Construction of aids to navigation which have been completed by 90%. Indonesia will continue to support IMO in implementing its strategic plan and ensure the balanced approach to address the needs for economic development and safety, security and environment protection of international shipping. Indonesia believes that our future lies on the sea. Therefore, we need to strengthen partnership and collaboration to be able to deal with all those maritime threats, including to strengthen the work of IMO as the only multilateral platform to solve global maritime problems. Indonesia is devoted to continuing its active participation and strong commitment in the deliberation of organization reform 
of the IMO. Continuously work on the implementation of IMO instrument, especially in the area of marine safety and security and environment protection policy. With a very large sea area that is approximately 70% of the total area of Indonesia with enormous potential and marine resources, especially in the industrial sector, Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Pelayaran has a role to optimize the potential of Indonesia's navy. The School of Sailing is a state-owned maritime institution managed by the Indonesia Ministry of Transportation. In 1953, the School of Sailing was originally named the Academy of Sailing Science, provide a diploma three program and had two study programs named Nautics and Engineering. In 1957, AIP was inaugurated by the first president of the Republic of Indonesia, President Soekarno, at the Sahari Building, Mangadua Ancol. In 1983, the Academy of Sailing Science changed its name to Training Education and Sailing Expert, or PLAP. In March 2000, the Training and Sailing Expert Education changed again its name to the School of Sailing, which carried out eight semesters of education in three majors. There are nautics, engineering, and sea transportation management and port or KALK. In 2002, the STIP school moved to Marunda Cilincing, North Jakarta with an area of 32 hectares. In 2018, as the IP obtained recognition of the Quality Management System Standard ISO 9001-2015 from the LIOTS Registered Quality Assurance Agency Certification. As the IP Jakarta also received A for institution accreditation according to the SK Ban PT. Not only that, all study program in STIP, which are nautical, engineering, and KALK study program, have also been A accredited by Banpete. STIP has lectures with IMC 6.09 certification for trainers training, IMC 3.12 for examiners trainings. IMC 6.10 for trainers of simulators and assessors training, instructional technique skills training, and applied approach for lecture. To create capable officers, various facilities have also been prepared by STIP Jakarta to support the teaching and learning process of cadets. STIP has 123 lecture rooms with a capacity of 1,637 students. Furthermore, to support the good learning methods, STIP has also provided a complete practical laboratory and also a complete library. Cadets and stipend cadets will go through eight semesters of learning at STIP until graduation. Where in first semester to fourth semester, they will stay at the dormitory. Semester five and six, they will be taking a real work practice. Semester seven and eight, they will return to study at the dormitory. Therefore, STIP Jakarta has also prepared a comfortable and separate dormitory for their cadets with a capacity of 1,560 people. 
to develop students' talents, SDIP offers extracurricular activities such as trombone, porous work, volleyball, badminton, wall climbing, swimming, canoeing, football, basketball, tennis, table tennis, football, and gym. Moreover, there are public facilities that have been prepared by SDIP, such as the ATM Center, Partner Banks, Main Clinic, Campus Park, Seafarers Training and Education Registration Room, New Taruna Registration Room, Setting Mart, Public Canteen, and Employee Pickup Buses. To become a professional and reliable officer with integrity, of course, it should be supported by adequate facilities. Here, SDIP provides opportunities for students to take part in onboard training so that students can experience sailing activities firsthand. Therefore, SDIP has prepared a practical sail called MH Tamrin Sail. Not only formal education, SDIP also provides non-formal education such as seafarers, skill training and seafarers training that have received approval from the Directorate General of Sea Transportation. Kaula Muda, jumpa lagi dengan saya Berlayar jauh keluar kota Mampir sebentar ke Pulau Nusa Penida Halo, saya Adita Kita jumpa lagi hanya di Kabar Moda Di episode kali ini Saya akan membahas mengenai STIP Ada yang tahu nggak STIP itu singkatan dari apa? Nah, Kaula Muda Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Pelayaran di Jakarta ini punya kabar gembira karena sebentar lagi akan menjadi kampus pelaut pertama di Indonesia yang mempunyai dan membuka program Strata 2 atau S2 layaknya perguruan tinggi lain di dunia. Dan S2 di STIP ini adalah sebuah komitmen nyata dari Kementerian Perhubungan untuk bisa turut 
mencetak SDM unggul di dunia kemaritiman dan kelautan. Kalau ingin mendapatkan informasi lebih lengkap, klik ke websitenya stipjakarta.ac.id. Indonesia is a country that sits at the fulcrum of the Indian and Pacific Ocean. With three archipelagic sea lines, it's committed to supporting the international seaborne trade. As maritime sector will continue to be a top priority, our priorities such as ensuring maritime safety and security at sea and undertaking maritime environmental protection would require close cooperation and active participation with the IMO. We take our responsibility seriously in ensuring safety and security of the vessels sailing through our archipelagic sea lanes. This commitment, for example, is manifested through the traffic separation scheme in Sunda Strait and Lombok Strait, adopted in the 101st Maritime Safety Committee meeting last June 2019. On maritime environmental protection, Indonesia has been actively working with IMO members to ensure the protection of marine ecosystems such as oil spill and dumping waste and plastic at sea by ships. Through its membership in the Council of IMO, Indonesia will continue to promote sustainable shipping by reducing air pollution and its impact on climate change by shipping. During October 2019, IMO led workshops to discuss the technical factors of reducing the transfer of Good morning, Bapak. Selamat pagi. Ya, video speaking, Pak. How are you? Forward plans include developing national baseline reports to assess the present situation. Eh, suara Pak Lolan kedengaran enggak, Mbak? Saya enggak kedengaran. Kedengaran? Oke, kedengaran ya. Pak Ant Low Fouling Project in London. Indonesia be the first country from the Glow Fouling Project members to conduct the first Glow Fouling Project Team National Task Force meeting. The meeting provides a variety of ideas and sharing information and experiences from government entities and related stakeholders towards the Glow Fouling Partnership projects. Indonesia develops a model training course to provide the latest training for seafarers to have competence in accordance with the minimum requirements required by the STCWF Convention. With the availability of a new training course model, which will later be applied to marine education and training in Indonesia, it is hoped that it can improve the competency of Indonesian seafarers. Indonesia's involvement in several uh, IMO-related projects is a clear uh, evidence of Indonesia's ya, commitment. Indonesia held a 12th Corporation Forum, 44th Tripartite yeah, Technical yeah, Experts yeah. Group and 12th Project Coordination Committee in Samarang, Central Java attended by three literal states and Malacca and Singapore Straits user states. Domestically, Indonesia continues to improve itself in several important fields in the maritime sector, such as national plan of action of reducing plastic debris by holding sea and beach cleaning activities simultaneously, in 228 ports throughout Indonesia, this activity managed to get a world record as a joint clean sea Halo, and beach action in uh, 228 locations. Increased sea transportation routes to support the maritime highway program have increased by 95% in 2019. The construction of pioneering sea transportation vessels has been completed as many as 95 units out of the total target of 103 units. Construction of 10 navigation ships. Izin Bu, suaranya kedengeran. Construction of aids to navigation. Ya, saya mau mengecek dengan Pak Lolan dari London. Indonesia will continue to support IMO in implementing its strategic plan and ensure the balanced approach to address the needs for economic development and safety, security and environment protection of international shipping. Indonesia believes that our future lies on the sea. Therefore, we need to strengthen partnership and collaboration to be able to deal with all those maritime threats, including to strengthen the work of IMO as the only multilateral platform to solve global maritime problems. Indonesia is devoted to continue its active participation and strong commitment in the deliberation of organization reform 
of the IMO. Continuously work on the implementation of IMO instrument, especially in the area of marine safety and security and environment protection policy. The area that is approximately 70% of the total area of Indonesia with enormous potential and marine resources, especially in the industrial sector. Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Pelayaran has a role to optimize the potential of Indonesia's Navy. The School of Sailing is a state-owned maritime institution managed by the Indonesia Ministry of Transportation. In 1953, the School of Sailing was originally named the Academy of Sailing Science, provide a diploma three program and had two study programs named Nautics and Engineering. In 1957, AIP was inaugurated by the first president of the Republic of Indonesia, Presiden Soekarno, at the Sahari Building, Mangadua Anjo. In 1983, the Academy of Sailing Science changed its name to Training Education and Sailing Expert, or PLAP. In March 2000, the Training and Sailing Expert Education changed again its name to the School of Sailing, which carried out eight semesters of education in three majors. There are nautics, engineering, and sea transportation management and port, or KALP. In 2002, okay. Pengembangan Sumber Daya Manusia Perhubungan BPSDM Perhubungan Republik Indonesia adalah negara kepulauan terbesar di dunia Terletak sangat strategis di antara dua benua dan dua samudra Penduduk Indonesia yang mencapai lebih dari 260 juta Merupakan potensi dan faktor terpenting yang harus terus dikembangkan kualitasnya Agar mampu membawa negara kesatuan ini menjadi bangsa yang modern, maju, dan mandiri. Dengan kondisi geografis, demografis, dan berbagai potensi yang dimiliki bangsa ini, transportasi menjadi kebutuhan dasar yang sangat vital. Saat ini, Kementerian Perhubungan gencar membangun berbagai infrastruktur transportasi dan mengembangkan sistem pelayanan transportasi nasional untuk mewujudkan keterpaduan pelayanan antar moda transportasi. Kualitas profesional sumber daya manusia transportasi berperan sangat vital untuk mewujudkan pelayanan transportasi yang handal dan berdaya saing tinggi sehingga sektor transportasi dapat menjalankan perannya sebagai urat nadi kehidupan masyarakat dan bangsa. Badan Pengembangan Sumber Daya Manusia Perhubungan 
adalah pelaksana teknis Kementerian Perhubungan yang bertanggung jawab menyediakan dan mengembangkan sumber daya manusia di bidang transportasi. Dalam melaksanakan tugasnya membentuk insan transportasi yang prima, profesional dan beretika, BPSDM Perhubungan mengedepankan interaksi aktif dengan seluruh stakeholder secara intensif dan berkesinambungan melalui pendekatan inovasi quadruple helix melibatkan partisipasi pihak akademik, pelaku usaha, pemerintah dan masyarakat. Saat ini, sektor transportasi telah memasuki era globalisasi yang sesungguhnya dan menghadapi berbagai tantangan besar seperti pemberlakuan ASEAN Free Trade Area, tantangan mengantisipasi pergeseran fundamental ke arah aplikasi digital yang serba cepat dan berskala internasional, dan tantangan mewujudkan pelayanan berbasis Smart and Green Transportation yang terintegrasi dan ramah lingkungan. Dalam upaya mempersiapkan cikal SDM transportasi masa depan yang tangguh, cerdas, dan memiliki kecepatan beradaptasi terhadap perubahan teknologi, BPSDM Perhubungan melaksanakan proses seleksi penerimaan calon taruna yang ketat. Terdiri dari tahap seleksi akademik, psikotes, seleksi kesehatan, seleksi kasamaptaan, dan seleksi wawancara. Program Masa Dasar Pembentukan Karakter Calon Taruna atau Mada Tukar adalah Chandra di muka untuk melatih sikap dasar pantang menyerah, disiplin, kerja keras, dan kerjasama. Sikap mental ini akan menjadi karakter dasar dan yang paling utama untuk menjadi insan transportasi yang unggul. Program Mada Tukar dilaksanakan di Balai Pendidikan, Pelatihan, dan Pengembangan Karakter Transportasi Pasir Jambu, Bandung. Fasilitas balai di bawah BPSDM Perhubungan ini dirancang khusus untuk melaksanakan program pembentukan karakter yang diharapkan dapat menanamkan semangat kebangsaan, kerjasama, dan lahirnya insan perhubungan masa depan yang berhati Indonesia. Ketarunaan dan pola asing disiplin around the club adalah ciri khas pendidikan dan pelatihan transportasi. Taruna dan Taruni wajib tinggal di asrama agar mereka lebih sempurna menyerap ilmu dan skill transportasi serta lebih cepat membentuk karakter yang menjadi ciri khas insan perhubungan yaitu kemampuan mengamalkan lima citra manusia perhubungan. BBSDM Perhubungan memiliki unit pelaksana teknis yang terdiri dari Politeknik, Akademi dan Balai yang tersebar di berbagai wilayah Indonesia. Dalam rangka membangun organisasi pendidikan vokasi yang berkelas internasional, seluruh unit pelaksana teknis transportasi darat, laut, dan udara ini memiliki fasilitas pendidikan yang lengkap, modern, dan berbasis teknologi transportasi terbaru dan berstandar internasional. Kurikulum diklat dirancang link and match dengan kebutuhan dan perkembangan di industri transportasi. Instruktur adalah aktor utama untuk menjamin transfer of knowledge dan transfer of values di sektor transportasi. Seluruh materi diklat disajikan oleh instruktur berpengalaman, ahli, dan bersertifikat internasional. Instruktur ini merupakan ujung tombak untuk membentuk insan transportasi yang profesional dan berdaya saing tinggi. Insan transportasi yang mampu mengutamakan keselamatan dan keamanan transportasi serta pelayanan prima. Pusat pengembangan SDM Perhubungan Darat adalah unit kerja di bawah BPSDM Perhubungan yang mempunyai tugas melaksanakan pembinaan teknis dan pengembangan sumber daya manusia di bidang transportasi darat dan perkereta apian. Unit pelaksana teknis matra darat adalah Politeknik Transportasi Darat Indonesia atau STTD Bekasi Politeknik Keselamatan Transportasi Jalan Tegal Politeknik Transportasi Sungai, Danau dan Penyeberangan Palembang Politeknik Perkereta Apian Indonesia Madiun Politeknik Transportasi Darat Bali Balai Pendidikan dan Pelatihan Transportasi Darat Mempawah Wahana Bakti Bakti Pusat Pengembangan SDM Perhubungan Laut bertugas melaksanakan pembinaan teknis dan pengembangan sumber daya manusia di bidang transportasi laut. Unit pelaksana teknis matra laut adalah Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Pelayaran Jakarta, Politeknik Ilmu Pelayaran Semarang,
Politeknik Ilmu Pelayaran Makassar, Politeknik Pelayaran Malahayati Aceh, Politeknik Pelayaran Sumatera Barat, Politeknik Pelayaran Surabaya, Politeknik Pelayaran Banten, Politeknik Pelayaran Barombong, Politeknik Pelayaran Sulawesi Utara, Politeknik Pelayaran Sorong, Balai Besar Pendidikan, Penyegaran dan Peningkatan Ilmu Pelayaran Jakarta, Balai Pendidikan dan Pelatihan Transportasi Laut Jakarta. We are the best Jakarta. Pusat Pengembangan SDM Perhubungan Udara bertugas melaksanakan pembinaan teknis dan pengembangan sumber daya manusia di bidang penerbangan. Dalam menghadapi tantangan globalisasi di dunia penerbangan, unit pelaksana teknis matra udara terus berupaya meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan untuk menghasilkan SDM transportasi udara yang tangguh. Unit pelaksana teknis di matra udara adalah Politeknik Penerbangan Indonesia Curug, Politeknik Penerbangan Surabaya, Politeknik Penerbangan Medan, Politeknik Penerbangan Makassar, Politeknik Penerbangan Palembang, Politeknik Penerbangan Jayapura, Akademi Penerbang Indonesia Banyuwangi, Balai Pendidikan dan Pelatihan Penerbangan Curug. Jadi saya bagian dari beasiswa 3T pemerintah pusat. Setelah saya jadi pilot, saya ingin mengabdi di Papua. Dalam rangka implementasi program prioritas Nawacita tentang pemerataan kesempatan pendidikan tinggi, BPSD Perhubungan melaksanakan program beasiswa unggulan 3T. Program beasiswa ini bertujuan memberi kesempatan kepada putra-putri terbaik lulusan SMA atau sederajat di wilayah terdepan, terluar, dan terpencil untuk menjadi taruna transportasi. BPSDM Perhubungan juga berkontribusi melaksanakan program diklat pemberdayaan masyarakat dengan memberi pelatihan keahlian terapan pada masyarakat di usia produktif. Sebagai instansi teknis di lingkungan Kementerian Perhubungan, BPSDM Perhubungan mendorong setiap unit pelaksana teknisnya untuk menjadi badan layanan umum. Dengan penetapan sebagai badan layanan umum, setiap UPT diharapkan lebih leluasa meningkatkan pelayanan kepada masyarakat seluas-luasnya dalam rangka mencerdaskan kehidupan bangsa. Aparatur perhubungan adalah garda terdepan dan berperan sangat vital sebagai perencana, pelaksana, dan pengawas pelayanan transportasi di masyarakat. Pusat pengembangan SDM aparatur perhubungan adalah unit pelaksana teknis BPSDM perhubungan yang bertugas meningkatkan kompetensi teknis dan manajerial profesional. Pusbang aparatur perhubungan ini merupakan kawah candra di muka untuk mempersiapkan para calon pemimpin aparatur Kementerian Perhubungan. The best leader are trained here. Pelantikan perwira transportasi adalah puncak pencapaian akademik taruna dan taruni transportasi. Mereka telah ditempa secara fisik, mental, dan akademik untuk menjadi kader insan perhubungan yang mampu mengamalkan lima citra manusia perhubungan. Bangtimu telah dinanti, bangkitkan semua kemampuan, mari kita bangun bangsa ini. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to extend our warmest greeting to our eminent speakers and guests. Secretary General of International Maritime Organization, Secretary General of the Ministry of Transportation, Republic of Indonesia, Director of Sea Traffic and Transport, Republic of Indonesia, Distinguished Senior Officer of the Ministry, Chairs, Directors, Academician, All Cadet, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. A very good afternoon to you all from Jakarta and good morning in London. I hope all the participants here are doing well in the midst of changes and challenges during this pandemic. 
My name is Fidia. I am pleased to welcome every one of you today on General Lecture, Current Situation of Maritime Transportation and Its Challenges. This program is brought to you by Human Resource Development Agency on Transportation, Republic of Indonesia. This general lecture aims to emphasize our continuing determination to closely collaborate with other countries and organizations for the development of the human resources, especially to learn on the international standard of transportation system and best practices in transportation. The purpose of this general lecture is to provide international views on the development and management on transportation from an international organization perspective. As the first agenda of today's event, I would like to invite all the participants to sing the national anthem of Republic Indonesia. We would like to request for the due respect. Guests and participants, ladies and gentlemen, now we move on to speech segment that is going to be started with a welcome speech delivered by Secretary General of the Ministry of Transportation, Republic of Indonesia. Please be invited, Secretary General of the Ministry of Transportation, Republic of Indonesia, Mr. Joko Sasono. The screen is yours. Uh, to Mr. Joko, uh, can you please unmute your voice, Bapak? Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Excellency, Secretary General of International Maritime Organization, Mr. Itak Lim, the Honorable Officials of the International Maritime Organization, the Honorable Officials of the Ministry of Transportation of Indonesia, cadets, participants, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good afternoon to everyone in Indonesia. A very good afternoon to everyone in London. In this wonderful afternoon, let us praise God Almighty for all his blessings that we could gather here. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to deliver this welcome speech 
on behalf of the Ministry of Transportation. I am pleased to welcome every one of you to this important general lecture entitled Current Situation of Maritime Transportation and its Challenges. Let me start by thanking His Excellency Secretary General of IMO. We are very appreciated and pleased to organize this lecture in collaboration with such a valuable speaker. Excellencies, participants, cadets, ladies and gentlemen. This general lecture is conducted virtually by the Human Resources Development Agency for Transportation of Indonesia in collaboration with the headquarters of International Management Organization in London, which aiming for all, our, all participants, including our cadets from 22 polytechnic academies and training institutions in transportation. Firstly, I would like to introduce our agency to Excellencies and to the officials of the IMO in London. The Human Resources Development Agency for Transportation is an institution under the Ministry of Transportation, which is responsible to develop human resources on transportation. The agency manages 27 education and training institutions with more than 22,000 cadets studying in our institution and currently doing on the job training each year. One of our strategy, strategies is to enhance the value of our graduates in the national and transnational transportation industry through improvement of quality and competencies that link and match with business world and the world transportation industry. Fulfillment of the national and international standard also one of the most important things to be achieved and focused on. Cooperation, collaboration with the national partners could be the excellent option to do so. As one of our missions is to gain added value and to improve the quality of transportation services that are reliable, convenient, efficient, effective, safe, and sustainable, we need to encourage young people, especially our cadets, to create innovations which can help to turn the possibilities and challenges into opportunities. Excellencies, participants, cadets, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we will learn about the current situation of sea transportation and its challenges in the area of integration system, as well as know that transportation is considered a significant contributor in a country. Therefore, the transportation system needs to be developed and managed sustainably. Consequently, it is vital to understand transportation policies to make decisions on environmental conditions and the functioning of transport system effective and efficient. The current situation has forced us to rethink and adapt as well as to adopt to a new reality. We are eager to learn about maritime transportation system with the COVID-19 pandemic and keen and of the global response and subject the reality of working conditions surrounding uncertainties and difficulties around port access, resupply, through changeovers, etc. Therefore, we hope this general lecture would also have cadets and participants to expand and enrich their knowledge and gain more international transport and system based on the IMO standard. His Excellency, participants, cadets, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a broad privilege to have His Excellency Secretary General of IMO to share valuable insights about how IMO has established and managed the transport system as well as the challenges during the COVID-19 pandemic. I strongly believe this lecture will motivate 
and inspire all participants to realize the importance of growing maritime industry. For that, I hope you all could gain the knowledge and expand your understanding of the transport system. Our event today would be notable once since we have important and competent speaker. This is a good start for us to exchange our knowledge and experience about the current transference condition. I hope that our moderator today can facilitate to build a productive and fruitful discussion. Once again, I thank you, Excellencies, Secretary General of IMO and officials of the International Maritime Organization in London for making this even possible. I hope there always be a, a synergic and mutually beneficial cooperation and collaboration between both in the institution. We look forward to our continued partnership. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Joko Sasono, for the welcome speech. And now we would like to have a photo session, but with all respect, uh, we request to His Excellencies, Mr. Kitaklim, to open the camera. Thank you. And now we can give our best smile on my count. Stand by in three, two, one. Once again, three, two, one. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to have this opportunity to introduce our agency to all of you. The Human Resource Development Agency on Transportation is an institution under the Ministry of Transportation, responsible to develop human resource in land transportation, sea transportation, and civil aviation. Our agency manages 27 education and training institution with more than 22,000 cadets studying in our institution. And some of them are currently on the job training in transportation industry. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, our next agenda is the general lecture delivered by the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization. This session will be guided by the Director of Sea Traffic and Transport, Mr. Antoni Arif Priyadi, as the moderator. But first, allow me to flash the curriculum vitae of our moderator today. Mr. Antoni Arif Priyadi started his education on nautical science from BPLP Semarang in 1995 then graduated in Master Marine Professional from STIP Jakarta in 2003. In 2006, he finished the Master Degree Program from World Maritime University, Sweden. And in 2014, he graduated from the University of Indonesia and University Luhart, France for a doctoral degree. His working experience started from 1999 in Semarang Marine Polytechnic, continue as Vice Academic of STIP Jakarta in 2017. In 2018, a transportation attaché at Embassy of Indonesia in Malaysia, continue as the Head of Navigation District of Tanjung Priok, and since 2020 up to now, working as Director of Sea and Traffic Transport Republic of Indonesia. Not only talented in working, but he is also active in publishing some journals and research. So, Mr. Antoni, the screen is yours. Thank you, Ms. Vidya. Uh, for your excellent introduction. Uh, my name is Anthony. Allow me to uh, facilitate uh, this general lecture. 
Uh, I would like to greet uh, Mr. Kitakli. How are you, sir? Uh, nice to meet you. Okay. Yeah, nice to meet you, sir. Thank you. And then also, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Joko uh, Sasono. Thank you. Also, uh, yeah. yeah, I believe that the Captain Satwa is also on the screen. How are you, Captain Satwa? Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, thank you. Grateful to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Firstly, I would like to welcome you to our two-day general lecture, which will be delivered by the Secretary General of National Maritime Organization, His Excellency Mr. Kitak Lim. The general lecture topic is quite interesting is the current situation of maritime transportation and also what is the challenge. So we are staying at home due pandemic. We cannot gain something. Like right now, it is so unexpected that we have many participants joining us in this general lecture. So we have around 1,500 participants in video conference through Zoom. They are cadets, they are academicians, they are maritime administration staff, medical inspectors, both state control officers, and others. And I believe many more will make this general lecture from our YouTube channel. All I will uh, read the introduction of this uh, general lecture. The government of Indonesia has been consistently contributing to the effort aimed at achieving the principle and purposes of the IMO in implementing its strategic plan that enable IMO to uphold its leadership optimally in ensuring the balance between the needs for economic development facilitation of international trade, safety, security, and environment protection of international shipping. That is because Indonesia has 636 ports and 141 are open for international trading with 54 of them support the national logistics single window. Of course, the number of ports with the national logistics single window will be increased each year as Indonesia is preparing national logistic ecosystem, which is in line with the previous PAL convention meeting. There are 3,989 national shipping company, which means 21,845 vessels with total 31 million gross ton. And also Indonesia water is covered by 25 navigation district office, which means 23 vessel traffic service, 112 GMTSS cost station, and two traffic suppression scheme, as well as five coast guard base office KPLP is located across Indonesian water with 41 vessel provided to maintain safety, security, marine environment in place. In addition to that, there are one maritime institute, STIP Jakarta, nine maritime polytechnic, Two maritime training is provided a part of 27 institutions under the Human Resource Development on Transportation and the Agency Ministry of Transportation. With all resources mentioned, the government of the Republic of Indonesia is seeking re-election to the membership of the IMO Council under category C for the period of 2022-2023. Dear participant, Recently, as the pandemic spread all over the country, maritime community is facing some issue like ocean freight, ship survey, 
automation, ship inspection, port congestion, crew change, and fascination. For your consideration, sir, Indonesia initiated seafarers as crew worker at United Nations uh, United Nations General Assembly last December 2020. And for that reason, 11 port in Indonesia are open for crew chain, with total up to now 7,594 crew chains uh, taken place. The current situation of maritime transportation is quite important for the world to raise up the instability maritime logistic mobilization. Therefore, quite interesting topic, our general lecture today is related what is the current situation on maritime transportation and also what is the challenge. Dear participants, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, without wasting more time, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker, His Excellency Mr. Kitak Lim. He was born in Masan, Korea, graduated from the Korea Maritime and Ocean University, KMOU Busan, and worked on ships before joining the Korea Maritime and Port Administration in 1985. From 1986, Mr. Lim participated in the Republic of Korea delega delegation to IMO meetings. In 2006, he was appointed as Maritime Attaché, Minister Counselor at the, at the Embassy of the Republic of Korea in London and served as alternate permanent representative to IMO until August 2000, 2009. Mr. Lim was then appointed Director General for Maritime Security Bureau at the Ministry of Land, Transport, and Maritime Affairs. In 2011, Mr. Lim was appointed Commissioner of the Korean Maritime Security Tribunal, KMST. In 2012, he became President of Busan Port Authority until January 2016, when he took up his appointment as Secretary General of IMO. Mr. Lee holds master degree from Yonsei University and the World Maritime University. Sir, I'm so impressed with your long life dedication to maritime community. Really, this is very hard dedication to maritime community. Not to wasting time, I invite His Excellency Mr. Petaklin to deliver your lecture. Time is yours, sir, and 20 minutes for the presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, moderator, uh, Antoni. Uh, thank you for the uh, introduction of oh, myself. myself. Uh, uh, Excellencies, Excellency Secretary General, General Choko Satsono, distinguished participant and uh, cadet and uh, student. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Salama well, Shang, you, Salama Shang, Senang Perke, Narandingan, Kamu. Namasaya Kitak Lim. Now, I would like to speak in English. Uh, above all, I would like to uh, thank Ministry of Transport of Indonesia for the inviting me and for the opening this very important lecture to the benefits of a cadet and a student. Welcome the cadet and all officials joining in particular participation of a student from non-maritime related area. Indonesia is very special uh, to me, even uh, personally, uh, not only uh, official status, in the field of the IMO meeting, Indonesia is one of the major IMO member states, at the same time, one of major, the maritime nation. Particularly, the Honorable President of Indonesia, 
Choco Widodo, he paid a visit to IMO in April 2016, right after I took office in January 2016. And he made presentation on forest maritime in English himself about uh, just over 20 minutes. That was uh, very well received by the old audience. I really appreciate his uh, contribution. And also myself, I worked for Fertamina on board a oil tanker in the uh, sea of Jakarta, which was uh, 40 years ago. So I have a very vivid, vivid memory while I stay uh, for the six months in that area. Every weekend I went to the uh, Jakarta to stay overnight. Today, my lecture, as I mentioned, uh, lasts uh, about 20 minutes. And I'd like to introduce general aspect of IMO, what we are doing. And also I would like to introduce what are the compending immediate uh, challenges faced by IMO and lead to the conclusion. Uh, the IMO, as you know well already, is one of 15 specialized agency of the United Nations for international shipping. Specialized agency is a thought of independence organization, management and the financial as well, decision making as well. This is a bit different from immediate direct organization under UN headquarters. We have 174 member states <clears throat> and <clears throat> IMO convention to establish IMO was is the, adopted in 1948 and that entered into force operational in 1959. IMO deal with the mainly maritime safety and efficiency of navigation and prevention of marine pollution from ships. In principle, according to the IMO convention, IMO does not get involved in the commercial activities of a shipping business. At the same time, in principle, IMO does not deal with political issues, even it is related maritime and ocean issues. We are focusing on technical policy and the standard. In many cases, a ship is compared to a building which is navigable, self-propelled navigable building. It is easy. IMO produce global regulation of a ship from the birth to recycling stage, that means the final stage of a ship service, which should be applicable universally and globally. All the regulation related to seaworthiness design and the structure, navigation, operation for the merchant shipping ships, and also uh, we do provide for fishing vessels as well. And then we uh, develop for the uh, qualification and training requirements program of seafarers, mainly focusing on nautical and the engineer officers. And also IMO develop legal scheme for the compensation of people and the environment damaged by ships operation. And also we uh, providing a legal system and the guidance for facilitation of all procedure in port, which is related to the shipping activity mentioned by the uh, moderator. And also we provide for technical cooperation program capacity building for developing countries. If I look at the international shipping, the current status briefly, as you know well, shipping carries 
more than 80% of the world trade by volume. Number of vessels, ocean going vessels is about 60,000 moving around the world. Shipping connects country, region and the continent, which is crucial for global supply chain, crucial for the global trade, global economy. When it comes to the, uh, the shipping business, which is uh, very much related to port industry, shipbuilding, equipment manufacturer on top of a shipping cluster areas. Now we are under COVID situation. If I briefly mention impact on the COVID on the shipping, but right after the COVID started the one and a half years ago, shipping started to slow down a little bit. But luckily from second half of uh, last year, shipping survived to recover his, uh, its business. That's why the prediction for 2021, it expected to grow approximately 4.3 percent, which is 0.5 percent above before the COVID, which is 2019. There's a commercial point of view, shipping business has not been much impacted. However, we have seen serious concern about the seafarers issues in terms of the uh, crew change crisis and access vaccination. There has been a lot of effort by the maritime community and also a UN system, including IMO, ILO, ICAO, WHO, etc. So even uh, the United Nations adopted the resolution last December, the focusing on the seafarers issues and the COVID situation, which was initiated by the Indonesian government, which mentioned by the moderators. So really, I'd appreciate uh, for that uh, very important contribution. We have been encouraging member states to designate the seafarers as key workers, key workers. But up to now, 62 member states designated, but still we are working on that. And about 82 countries allowed a crew change, you know, in their respective ports, but we also working hard. IMO, together with the ILO, very much committed to support the seafarers. We will continue our supporting activities for the seafarers. Even progress not, may not be satisfactory due to certain uh, regional and uh, domestic constra constraint, but we will continue to work our best to support the seafarers. If I talk about the, uh, talk about uh, the major the IMO policies start with the maritime safety and the security. Maritime safety security very much rely on international convention for the safety of life at the sea called the SOLAS and other important convention, including uh, search and rescue, load line, et cetera, which deal with uh, ships, hull safety, life-saving appliances, firefighting appliances, navigation appliances, search and rescue activity, etc. overall aspect of the uh, shipping. But uh, I'd like to highlight one of the important uh, policy which mentioned by the moderator, this is automation. Thanks to technological and digital development, ship's automation has been evolving year by year. But in terms of official plan for the ship auto automation, we established the strategy of uh, maritime autonomous service ships, which is called the MAS, which consists of four steps of automation. So low level automation, first level, and the final stage of the automation is the full automation. I am now, about to complete the study, how to revise all related regulations. Those activities is almost done, and each uh, uh, relevant uh, the meeting, uh, the, the official meeting will consider 
how to handle in the relevant respective uh, convention. It is expected to progress step by step, but definitely we have to utilize development of the digitalization and the technology development into shipping ship itself. However, when it comes to full automation issues, it takes a longer time, expected to a longer time due to the different factors, including a legal like aspect and operational aspect as well. Training and education for seafarers and the safety management of a shipping company are crucial. And also cybersecurity becomes more important. There has been uh, some cases of hacking to the uh, shipping related information system, which caused a huge damage in operation. So we are very much working on cybersecurity issues. I have to say about the piracy issues, which is a threat to shipping and the seafarers. One in the South Asian Sea, which is near the Indonesia, that area under control, thanks to the littoral state, particular Indonesian government. But despite some robbery issues here, but the general is well under control. And the Gulf of, G Gulf of Aden, where there was a serious situation between 2005 and the 2011 and the 12. So uh, there was a very serious, but thanks to the uh, global uh, support collaboration, that area is also under well, uh, well under uh, control. So there is, has been a lot of effort, but it's very successful. And another area, Gulf of Guinea in the Western African region, which is very serious, it deteriorating under COVID situation. But the, thanks to the effort among the littoral state and the global support for the last six months, the situation is improving. It is shaping a better a type of a collaboration, cooperation. So I would like to uh, take this opportunity to express my uh, thanks to the Nigerian government is very active by implementing Deep Blue project. So this situation very uh, improving, but uh, we are very concerned about the situation in Gulf of Guinea. So we, can, we are working on uh, well to uh, support this area to protect shipping industry and the seafarer safety as well. Another safety concern is Arctic navigation. Last uh, five or six years, there has been uh, about 25% of increase of transit through the Arctic waters. That is actually uh, due to uh, uh, climate change, more ice are melting down due to the climate change issues. But in a way, it is uh, uh, providing for room for the navigation of uh, ships. So uh, Arctic water is very vulnerable in terms of safety and environment perspective. So we are working on to enhance safety environment measure in Arctic water. So we are collaborating with Arctic Council as well. Now I'll move on to the prevention of marine pollution from ships. As you know well, we have very important convention, which is International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, MAPOL. Annex one to six. All mode of waste pollutant substance from ships are dealt with by that convention. Recently, we dealt with the ballast water management and low sulfur fuels, oils, IMO 2020, marine plastic issues, ships noise is being dealt with by the relevant environment committee. I am used to deal with the marine pollution itself. But since we started the climate change issue, air pollution issues, now air pollution, which is arising uh, from the ship's operation, is included in the IMO work in the scope of the MAPOL Convention Annex 6. Uh, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, now we are talking about greenhouse gas emission issues. When it comes to greenhouse gas emission issues, following Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goal adopted in 2015, 
she are working on to deal with the climate issues. In most cases, you know, study says 22.2, 2.2% of global emission is attributed to the uh, shipping. However, it is equivalent emission, overall whole emission from the uh, uh, German economy, economy of Germany. I am adopted the IMO basic strategy in 2018, which says 40% reduction of carbon intensity by 2030, 70% reduction by 2050 of a individual ships, and also at least 50% reduction of aggregate emission of all ocean going ships by 2050. And then uh, we are decarbonize, try to decarbonize all internet shipping earliest in this uh, century. That the strategy contain short, mid, long-term measure relating to the engine efficiency, speed reduction, optimization, equipment, new fuels, biofuels, hydrogen, ammonia, electricity, those need a lot of research work to apply to the ship's operation. Above all, there is one very important major mentioned in strategy is a carbon tax, which is market-based measure. It is a commercial measure to encourage cut emission of GHG from ships. So this is very important issues. I would say GHG response, greenhouse gas climate change response of shipping is not a simple one. I believe it is a revolutionary impact on shipping in terms of design, engine, fuels, and operation. Even it is affecting the operation of a port, port operation as well. In terms of environment, also we are dealing with the ship recycling. This is dismantling of a ship to follow regulations in terms of safety and environment protection. And next item is a compensation. Damage to people and environment from ships operation. This is related to the liability, financial liability. So most of liability and the compensation regime have been developed by IMO. It is being implemented mainly by the IOPC fund, which is an arm to implement. Also, uh, the other issues, uh, compensation issues, is uh, being implemented by the commercial aspect, including a PNI club and uh, shipping uh, companies. Another area I mentioned facilitation, ship port information sharing standardization of document and procedure import, which is also related to the single window platform. I, I like to Indonesia is working on that issues, uh, very positive. And uh, finally, I would like to mention technical cooperation and capacity building. Under IMO's umbrella, we have uh, two training and education system, which are the World Maritime University and International Maritime Law Institute is working hard. And we are provide regional and global seminar workshops. And we are promoting partnership among member state industry, financial institution, including World Bank and EBRD as well. Annual budget, the overall technical cooperation, including uh, two institutions, which uh, reached uh, last year about 25 uh, million US dollars. Not big amount, but we are also focusing on the facilitation partnership among member states and industry as well. Now I'd like to uh, mention major challenges. Three, one is responding climate change. I mentioned all the earlier climate change, but we have to raise our level of ambition based on 2018 strategy. When we can complete the decarbonization of shipping, we have to talk about technical operational measure to meet the new target. 
as I mentioned, we have to restart market-based measure. When and which methodology to be adopted, this is a key, very controversial issues. And also we have to enhance research work of the alternative future fuels. There has been huge divide between Western advanced countries together with the small island countries and the oil producing countries, developing countries. But that has been, despite of different views, that has been very good progress for the compromise among all member states. I really appreciate that. Climate change issues something we have to face head on. Climate change issues are not the something we can escape. That's why I believe important element message is to how widely we respond to and observe climate change issues and major in our shipping industry for the future development. A second element, second factor challenges of seafarers welfare. As you know well, I am adopted the World Maritime Theme for 2020. Seafarers at the core of a shipping's future. This promotes the role of seafarers, particularly during COVID-19 pandemic. So as I mentioned, we continue work on to support health seafarers. They are key players of international shipping. And also I have to mention gender equality in maritime industry, which is related to the UN Sustainable Development Goal 5, achieve gender equality, empower all women and the girls. IMO has uh, improving a lot the uh, promotion of uh, gender issues in IMO uh, regime. So women represent the majority fellow at IMO Maritime Training Institutes around the 50, 60, 56%, gradually increased, increasing in participant in the training. A major increase in the participant technical cooperation activities on development of national maritime policies, about 45% by women the engagement. Also participation of women in IMO meeting steadily increasing nowadays over 30 percent. There is a dramatic increase for the last, uh, last 10 years. Uh, dear cadet and the student, the world is uh, facing a new ocean era following UN Sustainable Development Goal adopted 2015. A scheme for ocean governance, marine technology, digitalization, and arctic navigation are key topic to shipping. Above all, as I mentioned, we have to navigate very wisely the major challenge of our time, which is climate change. I firmly believe that these challenges will provide ample opportunities for maritime and related industries. We just need to take charge and prepare the way for a sustainable maritime future. What exactly do I mean by that? There are more opportunities in shipping and port industry, marine technology, shipbuilding, ship repair, equipment manufacturing, and in ocean science as well. These opportunities have to be supported by developing global manpower in the maritime field, representing maritime interests at all international levels, IMO and within the industry and all other related forum. Indonesia, with its advantageous geographical location, has immense potential for significantly contributing to these efforts and seizing these opportunities. Indonesia has a firm government policy on maritime matter led by your honorable president with a strong leadership in the Minister of Transport provided by Minister Karia Sumadi and the Secretary General, Mr. Joko Sassono and other staff. The Indonesian workforce is held in high esteem globally for its diligence 
integrity and excellent command of foreign languages. I have the honor of working closely with the excellent Indonesian representatives in UK, in particular ambassador of Indonesia to the UK and representatives to IMO. I value immensely their support for the work of IMO. Given the great participation and interest here today, I see a bright future for Indonesia in the development of its maritime industry, contributing to green, efficient, and sustainable global maritime community. I wish the Indonesian government and all of you the very best in your endeavors in the future. Dear cadet and the student, maritime world is worthy of a full opportunities. As William Shakespeare has wisely written, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, moderator. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Kipakli. I believe the participant is quite uh, challenged by uh, your material and your speech. Of course, um, this matter quite comprehensive from technical up to the challenge, from the current situation uh, and also for the next challenge. And I can underline the point from your presentation as follow. I believe a lot of a point but uh, to summarize, first regarding the IMO itself with a specialist agency. The second things about the technical policy and standard IMO doing. The third one is about the shipping business related to the quality shipbuilding, uh, et cetera. The fourth one is regarding the seafarers issue situation under COVID-19. As you mentioned also the role play of the seafarers as key workers. The Fifth one regarding to the uh, marine safety. And also you mentioned regarding the automation, which consists of four steps, low level automation up to the full uh, automation. And then the next one regarding the cybersecurity. Thank you that this is one is also a current issue that we need to prepare to face with this uh, cyber Heck.
Some advanced countries have developed autonomous vehicles and unmanned ships. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Kader Cidix. I will continue to the second uh, question, uh, Mr. Kitaklim. So we will run three questions all and then the, you may respond to the question. The second question raised by the Agnes from Makassar Merchant Marine Polytechnic. Kader Agnes, time is yours. Thank you for the time, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I am Agnes Lorenz Salamba, a cadet of Polytechnic of Merchant Marine Makassar. Thank you for the insightful lecture I just got, but I have a question, sir. Until now, seafarers are still seen at widely available as male job, not only at the national scale, but also at the global level. Many ships are not available to women seafarers. My question is, what is the role of IMO in improving career opportunities for women seafarers? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Cadet Agnes. Uh, she is from the Nautical Science, sir. Uh, the third question raised by the Cadet Ahmad Zulfikar from Sorong Merchant Marine Polytechnic. Cadet uh, Zulfikar, please. Thanks for the chance, sir. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Let me introduce myself. My name is Ahmad Zulfikar, a cadet from Polytechnic of March and Marine Sorong. In 2015, 193 countries adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. This agenda calls for action by all countries to eradicate poverty and achieve sustainable development by 2030 worldwide and the SDGs are seen as an opportunity to transform the world for the better and leave no one behind. So my question sir, how does World Maritime University as a part of IMO play its role in regards to the SDGs? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kitaklim, there are three questions. The key word of that question, first regarding the IMO perception on archipelagic, archipelagic country like Indonesia, then the existence of the automation. Also, the question, uh, second question regarding the challenge on more women seafarers on vessel or on ships, and then the third one regarding the involvement of what might be university for sustainable development goal. Uh, Mr. Kitaklim, time is yours for respond that question. Uh, <clears throat> thank you uh, for the very smart and the valid uh, questions. Uh, respect to the uh, first question in terms of uh, the education training of uh, seafarers, in uh, which is relevant to the automation of uh, uh, ships, bearing in mind the uh, certain uh, difference of environment of advanced country and the developing country. As I mentioned, the technical cooperation capacity building program initiated by the IMO. We are dealing with the different mode of uh, technical cooperation activities, subject to the major challenges which are identified relevant uh, meeting like uh, safety committee meeting or environment committee meeting and etc so when it comes to the education training relevant to the automation issues as i mentioned automation issues is uh, done by the uh, IMO's M M A S S study, like uh, how we have to revise and amend the current regulation to accommodate auto automation of ships, which is uh, consisting of a four step of automation. So there should be four level of automation, how we accommodate this automation, which can be observed which can be well received by the seafarers. This is the area we have to further identify what kind of education. 
but based on the development or uh, the uh, the information already identified in terms of uh, technological or information digital development relevant to automation we are the reflecting those uh, requests or demand into our technical cooperation program our main program is the itcp international technical cooperation program itcp program is accommodating different uh, kind of uh, request demand from uh, uh, the member states for the technical cooperation which will be focusing on training and education of seafarers one second one we are developing as i mentioned a partnership among member states among member states and between member states and the industry as well so we are moving on to finalize the study about the mass in terms of revision of current regulation then we will further reflect those demand element of demand or request of the uh, member state into our uh, technical cooperation program for the training and education environment may be different from country by country that's why the partnership uh, arrangement among member states is crucial not only regional seminar or regional workshop or the training wmu or or imni but the, the uh, partnership arrangement is very crucial. So we will uh, bearing in mind that the element mentioned by the, uh, uh, the, the student cadet. And the second one, uh, gender parity issues. Actually, uh, the gender parity situation different country by country, but I have to mention there is a strong movement in terms of the gender parity issues and the maritime industry for the last four years there is strong movement it is uh, taking place uh, hugely you know many part of world and the latin countries and african countries and also asian country as well imo the through the technical cooperation program we are accommodated this kind of program but the, we are working uh, with the this is a WISTA is an international association for the gender parity in shipping and trade business, trade industry. So we were collaborating with the WISTA. First one, we are encouraging the member states or industry to establish their own women network in their country first and in that region. So it is uh, moving uh, very well, but uh, I have to admit some uh, slow the progress on the COVID situation. But the even COVID situation, there is uh, activities, online activities to promote the gender issues. But I also with that uh, bearing in mind that the question, I will emphasize these issues in working to with Vista and uh, IMO technical cooperation to highlight the to facilitate the gender issues in the maritime community. But definitely there is a huge development and movement for the gender issues in all aspects of the maritime. So I will bear in mind the, the situation of Indonesia in that aspect more. And the last uh, question relating to the uh, sustainable development goal adopted in 2015 in 2015 by UN and also uh, like uh, the public uh, poverty issues and relevant to the uh, we have to uh, campaign no one left behind my own campaign uh, when I uh, the started of my uh, my position is very relevant my campaign is uh, voyage together we have to navigate together no one uh, left behind so many time university i believe many time university is a crucial part in dealing with uh, sustainable development issues as well first one 
Maritime University, you have uh, like uh, International Association Maritime University, that association, that activities uh, should be strengthened, enhanced in a more concerted effort. And second, and there is another one, uh, IMRA, uh, Maritime Lecturers Association, IMRA is also organization among maritime university. So those activities, they need uh, you know, enhance more collaboration and cooperation among maritime university and among maritime lecturers. This is uh, the something uh, maritime university uh, pay attention to. And also those activities, I believe, can collaborate more with the IMO's technical cooperation activities. So uh, not the, uh, the, uh, the working individually, if we have a concerted effort, which can create the synergy effect to the best interest of the shipping industry and the sea pilot as well. So now the, I have been uh, emphasizing, highlight a lot the value of a collaboration. We have to always try to collaborate, cooperate each other for the common uh, like issues, common welfare. That's why I really like that uh, question. So uh, I will also emphasize to the, uh, the Maritime University Association and also uh, Maritime Lecturers Association importance of a collaboration with IMO and on top of among themselves. Uh, thank you, moderator, Antonio. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Kitaklim. We need to hear applause for the uh, cadet who raised the question on question one. <laughs> Sir, in second session, we have also uh, three participants raised the question. Uh, the cadet uh, Desa Dwilestari, Riduanto, and also cadet uh, uh, cadet uh, wazir uh, first of all yeah i ask cadet uh, desa dwilestari from the aviation of polytechnic surabaya time is yours please thank you for the time sir uh, good afternoon sir i am desa dian dwilestari a cadet of polytechnic Aviation of Surabaya. I feel honored to have this rare change of meeting the Secretary General of the IMO. Even virtually, it is still a bliss. My question is, we all know that the aviation sector has one of the safest and most secure modes of transportation. So how does IMO work on improving maritime transport to be as safe and secure as in the aviation sector? Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you, Kadet Desak Dulistari. And okay. then, yeah, the, the second question from uh, Kadet Riduanto Fernando. Uh, uh, he, he is from the Land Transportation Polytechnic. Time is yours, Riduanto, Kadet Riduanto. Please. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I am Riduanto Fernando, a cadet of Indonesia Land Transportation Academy. I'm glad to attend this first lecture. And please let me ask a question. Indonesia is an aquatic country with waters as two thirds of its territory, just like most the earth surface is water. So how does the International Maritime Organization work on the preserving and maintaining the clean ocean policy? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Kadet Rituanto. And then the last, uh question raised by the cadet uh, Wazir uh, from Semarang Merchant Marine uh, Polytechnic. Uh, cadet uh, Wazir, time is yours. Thank you for the time, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Let me introduce myself. My name is Wazir Naf Anjayanto. I'm a cadet of Semarang Merchant Marine Polytechnic. I'm glad to attend this beneficial lecture. And in this occasion, let me ask a question. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many transportation activities were hampered while commodity transport must keep going. Hence, seafarers will come and go to many different places all around the world. 
Some countries allow seafarers not to quarantine for reasons. And my question here is, uh, how can we be sure that the seafarers entering an area that is free from the COVID-19 virus? And what measurements should we take? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Cadet Wasir. There are three questions, Mr. Kitaklim, raised to you. And I believe uh, you will respond uh, soon. Time is yours. Uh, thank you, moderator. So uh, regarding uh, first question, uh, safety element, there has been a lot of uh, actually collaboration work between IMO and uh, ICAO. So there is a lot of a common like uh, area and the common terminology between shipping and the air aviation. However, uh, when we look at the reality of uh, operation of shipping and aviation that are very much different to each other. Because the aviation uh, based on bilateral agreement between uh, countries, member states, without which the aviation route cannot be established. One. Second one, the manufacturing manufacturing industry is a very limited in small number of a country, small number of a manufacturing company to produce like uh, aircraft. Uh, and uh, also uh, the uh, nationality of uh, aviation uh, airplane is a uh, the uh, not the something can be changeable uh, subject to the uh, wish of the private sectors based on the uh, bilateral agreement. While if you look at uh, the uh, <coughs> shipping, basically shipping is based on freedom of navigation based on the United Nations uh, Convention of a Law of the Sea. This is based on freedom of a navigation. That's why ship can travel subject to the uh, company, subject to the uh, contract to everywhere, every country. And the second one, the ship can be manufactured in uh, many more different uh, locations. And third one, nationality, in a way, much easier to change to A to B, subject to the, uh, the international uh, like uh, custom and the practice of uh, shipping, which dated uh, to the uh, long time ago. And finally, the composition of a CFRs is a more multinational than the aviation. So this is a different kind of element is working for the operation of shipping. But uh, also uh, there has been, uh, as I mentioned, are uh, working about uh, 60,000 uh, ocean going ships. In addition, uh, domestic shipping. So there has been a lot of effort by the industry themselves, and also were following the uh, international guideline and the regulation convention developed in the IMO. There has been huge development in terms of safety and also were to prevent the, some pollution which arising from shipping activity, huge development. But I know we have seen some different kind of accident still taking place. But uh, we have to work, uh, continue to work to mitigate negative impact or to reduce the extent of uh, maritime incidents. So this is what uh, we are doing. So uh, the, in that sense, you know, I have to uh, mention, actually, uh, I me we mentioned uh, to the, uh, at the previous question, about 80% uh, of the root cause of the maritime accident is relating to the human element. 
Schumann element is relating to the two area, seafarers like a maneuverability of ships, and the second one is safety management of a shipping uh, company. So this area is very important. So uh, IMO is uh, uh, enhancing the effort to deal with the human element uh, more than before to the prevent, uh, you know, or mitigate any kind of the maritime incident. So still, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, communication and uh, collaboration with the aviation uh, means uh, international, the aviation ICAO. So uh, there is a lot of effort between IMO and ICAO. And the second uh, question uh, in terms of the, uh, how do we secure clean ocean policies? Clean ocean policies, uh, when it comes to the IMO work, as I mentioned, IMO mainly uh, deal with, uh, you know, uh, prevention of pollution from ships operation. So deal with all mode of the waste or pollutant or substance from ships, not to be, you know, uh, the, uh, or uh, the uh, enter into the ocean and the sea. So we have uh, the uh, several uh, convention, including MAPOL convention. On top of that, what we are dealing with, we are uh, dealing with the uh, London dumping convention, which is a waste from shore side can be dumped to the sea. But nowadays we are enhancing strength, strengthening regulation in terms of uh, dumping activities from the shore side to the sea. So we deal with uh, that issue. So uh, much more stringent regulation now applying to the dumping issues. At the moment, you know, uh, when it comes to the uh, clean, like a uh, management of the ocean, we now pay more attention to the clean, the uh, ocean issues by applying in a way, expanding work of the, our, our environment, uh, the activities, not only the dumping issues to uh, contribute the clean ocean, uh, to pr preserve uh, the, the ocean environment as clean as uh, possible. So also uh, we, we are working together, collaborating with together other UN agencies like uh, UNEP and IOC, etc. As I mentioned, we are very, very concerned about the particularly uh, also uh, uh, not only uh, different ocean, but we are paying a lot of attention to the Arctic waters, which is very vulnerable. Arctic water and Antarctic water as well. Polar area, two polar area is also our main concern. And uh, regarding uh, third question, CFRS issues, as I mentioned, the key element is a quarantine and the vaccination issues. So quarantine issues, this is now very much related to the uh, vaccination. So uh, nowadays the vaccination to the CFRS, you know, still a challenge. And also, as you know, well, vaccination is uh, remain the big challenge to many parts of the world, many parts of the countries. You know, some countries advanced in the vaccination, some countries are not much advanced. So it is a very, you know, a lot of a constraint and uh, restriction in the individual countries. But with that in mind, uh, we are working uh, on the encouraging member state to remove like uh, restriction to the seafarers as much as possible. And also we are working on the vaccination issues, working communicate with the WHO, the how to uh, secure vaccine for the ships, ship seafarers. Actually seafarers should be taken care of by uh, their own countries, but they are traveling around the world we are developing like international like uh, supporting system for the CFRS in terms of vaccination. So there is some uh, uh, progress, uh, you know, uh, like uh, some uh, the European countries and the, some states in the United States, they are providing vaccination to the CFRS, but uh, we are continue to encourage member states 
to provide the vaccination to the international seafarers on top of effort of the national like uh, government of the seafarers. So thank you for raising that matter. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Kit Aklim, quite comprehensive explanation. Again, we need to hear the applause for that uh, uh, second session question. Yes, uh, before conclusion remark, actually, uh, we have also some uh, senior official here, uh, Mr. Kitaklim. I should greet uh, uh, Mr. Junaiti from the uh, Bureau of uh, Communication Information. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Junaiti. Also, the uh, principal of. Good afternoon, of the, Mr. Antonio. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you also very the, much. The secretary, yeah, the secretary of uh, uh, the secretary of uh, PPSDM or the secretary of uh, uh, Human Resource Development on Transportation Agency, uh, Mr. Uh, Yuki. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank, Thank you. Good morning, uh, Mr. Uh, Kita clean. Yeah. Also, uh, oh. we have the uh, head of uh, head bureau of the uh, uh, human resource, uh, Mr. Hernadi. How are you, Mr. Hernadi? And. Also, we have uh, the principal of uh, uh, Jakarta Maritime uh, Institute, uh, uh, Mr. Amiruddin, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Antoni and all cadets, and good morning, Mr. Kitab Lin. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Yeah, selamat siang. <laughs> selamat <laughs> siang. <laughs> and also, also, we have some staff from the uh, Indonesian Embassy at uh, in London office. Uh, Miss Rara, who are you, Miss Rara? Say something to Mr. Kitaklim. Morning, Mr. Kitaklim. Thank you for your um, kind sharing to the cadets. It's really valuable for them and for me too to learn again from you. Thank you. Okay, and also our uh, Makasi. Yeah, yeah. Also, our transportation attach, sir, Mr. Roland Panjaitan. Selamat sore. Good. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Antoni. Good morning, Mr. Sekjen. Uh, it's very valuable your presence is here. Thank you very much for your coming. Yes. Uh, also, thank you. Yeah. Also, uh, the ladies behind the scenario, uh, we have uh, Sindu Rahayu. Miss Sindu Rahayu says something that this is a very hard preparation for all of us. Hello, uh, selamat sore Pak Sekjen Kementerian Perhubungan. Hello, uh, Mr. Sekretaris Jenderal, Mr. Kitak. How are you? Okay, nice to yeah. meet you. It's really, you? it's really nice to meet you again, Pak. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I forget uh, someone. I should say that uh, Mr. Iman Rashid, the head of Land Transportation Human Resources, also here. Good afternoon, sir. Say something. Thank you, panelis, Mr. Antone, and thank you, Pak Sekjen, Kemenhub, and also Mr. Kitab, the Sekjen of the IMO International Maritime Organization of the UN. Selamat sore. Terima okay. kasih. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Yes. Of course, uh, it is now become my turn to conclude the general lecture today uh, by His Excellency Mr. Kitaklim as follow. Actually, I just say uh, one uh, sentence, collaborate and cooperate for a bright future. That is the conclusion, sir, without the long uh, description of the uh, uh, summary or conclusion of this uh, lecture. Uh, again, give applause to Mr. Kitaklim and uh, all of us.
Uh, again, thank you, Mr. Secretary General, for sharing your opinion and experience to us. Hopefully, this general lecture will give a and mental support to all of us, all of us, particularly to our new generation. Uh, again, thank you. And then to remember our moment today, I would like to ask to take some picture together. Mr. ladies and gentlemen, uh, you may turn on uh, your camera and committee will account for the photo session. A committee, please, time is yours to arrange the photo session. May we start? Three, two, one. Okay, next, once again, smile. Three, two, one. Thank you very much, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Again, give applause to all of us for this fruitful uh, discussion. I would like to invite Ms. Vidya as the uh, MC to continue the agenda. Thank you very much. See you again and good morning, also good afternoon in Indonesia. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Keita Klim. Thank you, Mr. Antoni. Thank you, His Excellency, Mr. Kita Klim and Mr. Anthony for sharing the information and knowledge to us. What an interesting session. Can I have another applause? Thank you. Before we close the general lecture today, we will have a few words, appreciation, from the Secretary of Human Resource Development Agency and also from the principal of Jakarta Marim Institute. First, we want to hear the words appreciation from Secretary of Human Resource Development Agency. To Pak Yugi Hartiman, the screen is yours. Secretary General, all, all uh, uh, yeah. Um, His Excellency, Mr. Kita Klim, um, the Secretary General of the International Merit, uh, Maritime Organization, for your time uh, for sharing uh, the valuable insight about uh, how IMO has uh, established and manage the international sea transportation policy, especially for focusing in Indonesian condition as an archipelago, as a strategic nation with huge number of seafarers, and uh, that most of the seafarers went to training institution under the Ministry of Transportation. Uh, thank you also for motivating uh, the cadet. Uh, actually, and there are more than 24,000 cadets all over Indonesia, uh, not only for uh, marine sector, but also for from railway, road, and uh, inland waterways, and also from aviation, uh, attending this uh, general lecture. Um, uh, since maybe already mentioned that one of our strategy is uh, to enhance the, the value of our graduates in uh, international transportation industry through improvement of quality and uh, competencies by giving them an um, international views, improve their uh, self-confidence and capability in public speaking, 
especially in using uh, international languages. Uh, my appreciation also goes uh, to Mr. Secretary General of um, Ministry of Transportation, Mr. Joko Sasono, uh, that uh, officially op opened this uh, general lecture, and also for moderator, Mr. Anthony, and also all participants, uh, uh, which consists of official of MOT and uh, also our uh, beloved, beloved cadet. I hope, I hope that uh, this activity will strengthen the cooperation between MOT of the Republic of Indonesia and also uh, with the, the IMO. I think that's all uh, from uh, me. Thank you very much. Time is up, Mr. and Ms. Vidya. Thank you to Mr. Yugi Hartiman for your appreciation. And now we will hear the few of words of appreciation from the principal of Jakarta Maritime Institute, or we call it STIP in Bahasa, to Mr. Amiruddin. The screen is yours. General of IMO, Mr. Kitabdin, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of STIP, I would like to express our gratitude to have granted this opportunity to get insights from His Excellency, the Secretary General of IMO. It is, the, it is a pleasure and honor to meet you now virtual, but I hope there will be, be, there will be a better chance to meet in person. Our campus has served for 63 years, producing not only superiors but also academician with bachelor degree. This year, the Ministry of Education has entrusted us to start the first and only maritime vocational postgraduate program, the, the master degree in Indonesia. We hope to get recommendation and support from Your Excellency to cooperate with the World Maritime University for the student and lecture exchange and research development. Thank you again. Thank you very much your time and good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Amiruddin. And ladies and gentlemen, the Human Resource Development Agency on Transportation would like to give a token of appreciation to the speaker and moderator for their cooperation and support for the success of this event. The first token of appreciation is given to His Excellency Mr. Kitaklim. Can we have an applause? Thank you. And the next appreciation is given to Mr. Anthony Arif Priyadi. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of this event. On behalf of the committee, I'm Fidia, would like to thank His Excellency Mr. Kitaklim, Mr. Joko Sasono, and Mr. Antoni Arif Priyadi, and to all guests, ladies and gentlemen. And last but not least, we also want to send our pray and our deepest condolences for the pandemic that is happening in the world now. Thank you once again for your time and your kind attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Nama Budaya, dan Salam Kebajikan.
Kau gemilang Malam cemerlang Bagaikan bintang timur Sedang mengembang Tajam Bentar, Pak Tekin bicara, saya kirim Siapa yang mau bicara? Iya, halo Bapak Ibu. Selamat sore Bapak Ibu, acara kita telah selesai hari ini. Dia mau bicara Bu Cindu. Bu Widya pas dia mau bicara Bu. Iya, siap Bapak. Dengar arahan beliau. Oh, siap ini, Bapak. Ini dimatikan dulu ini. Dengarkan arahan Pak Sekjen. Terima kasih kawan-kawan ya. Atas acara ini, tentunya ini memprovokasi kita semuanya.